manifests his spirit of hypocrisy. That's right. In other words, what he came as, he was not that. In the book of Joshua, chapter but 23. But what he came as was to gain the prophet. That's right. And gain the prophet's son and to distract them from the altar. That's you right. bear in mind, the journey of Abraham and Isaac was to the altar. Yeah. The sacred place. Yeah. Your journey towards God first must stop at the altar. That's right. The sacred place. That's right. And the objective of Satan is to swerve you, yeah. distract you, move you from that journey to the altar. Right. What is the altar? Now, most times we think the altar is the front part of the church building yeah. where you kneel. Yeah. The altar just symbolizes that which is sacred where sacrifices is being rendered. Yeah. That's any place that you submit yourself and offer yourself up to God right there. That's your altar. Yeah. That's your altar right there. That's right. I want you to listen at this good now. In the All book, right. In the book of Joshua, chapter 23, and we're at verse 25. Yes. And whilst Abraham was proceeding with his son Isaac along the road, uh -huh. Satan came. Who came? Satan came. Keep in mind. Right. The devil came. And appeared to Abraham. And he appeared to Abraham. In the figure of a very aged man. He, wait a minute. Who came? Satan came. And how did he come at? And appeared to Abraham in the figure of a very aged man. He appeared to Abraham as an old man. Why? Humble. Now, the purpose of coming to Abraham as an old man, that way he can get into dialogue with him. That's right. Befriend him. Be sociable. That's right. Blend in. You know, whenever the devil blends in, you know what that does? Blind you to his threat. That's right. Because he blend in so well. That's right. And when he blend in, you can't see his or her real agenda until their agenda is made manifest. That's but right. first, blend in. Camouflage them as a sister, as a brother. Camouflage them. But they're camouflaged to pretend to look like and act like and appear like what they are not. That's right. Are you listening? That's right. The word of God says. And whilst Abraham was proceeding with his son Isaac. Abraham was proceeding with his son Isaac. Along the road. Uh, proceeding with his son Isaac along the road. Satan came. The devil came. And appeared to Abraham in the figure of a very aged man. And what? Humble. Wait a minute. <laughs> Amen. How did he appear? Humble. But who was it that came? Satan came. How did the devil present himself? Humble. Who was it that came? Satan came. How did the devil present himself? Humble. With what character? And appeared to Abraham in the figure of a very... With what character? Humble. With what attitude? Humble. With what appearance? Humble. With what look? Humble. But who was it really? Satan came. That's right. It's good teaching. Mm. Satan. Satan. A spirit that had mastered the craft of shape shifting. That's right. That's right. Satan is a shape shifter. That's right. Now, if he's a shape shifter, every form he comes in describes his character. That's right. The Bible calls him serpent, serpent. that old serpent. old serpent. The Bible says the serpent is more subtle than any beast of the field. So if Satan is called old serpent, old, old, not just serpent, old serpent means he is a master in subtlety. He is a master in trickery. He's a master in deception. He bears the title old because nobody been tricking anybody longer than the devil. That's right. Are you listening? That's right. He's called great 
red dragon. He's not just called dragon, but it's called great red dragon. Now, ain't got nothing to do with someone buying a red car. No, no, not at all. But the reason why the Bible used the color red, great red dragon, red mean bold. You know, red is a bold color. Great red dragon, great bold dragon, because a dragon is not passive. Dragon is a beast who's out to slay, destroy, murder. Dragon ain't the picture. It's designed to kill you. His other character that described in the Bible, he walketh about as a roaring lion. Then the Bible gave the reason. Seeking. That means he's looking for folk. That's right. Seeking. I mean, how much plan can you have? It? That's right. He's told you what he's doing. Seeking. Seeking. Whom, whom he may, he may devour. Devour. Right. And there's nobody on the planet exempted. That's right. That's right. From all men of God down. That's right. Nobody. Nobody. Samson met Satan that worked through Delilah. He had a different hairstyle afterward. <laughs> Prophets met Satan that worked through Jezebel till they had to change their address. It is written they lived in caves. So he's a shape shifter. He have more followers and more preachers and more churches than God. God only have one church. In fact, God only have one preacher. And he's that preacher. For he told the apostles, it's not you that speak it, but it's the voice of my father speaketh in you. God don't have a lot of followers. He never did. So I'm saying with all these people in the world, if trillions and trillions follow God, Satan still have more than that. The book says it this way. Straight and narrow is the way. They lead to life. Few that be that find it. But broad is the way. That lead to destruction. That lead to destruction. And many there How be. How many? Many there be. Many that be. Which go in their act. So the path to destruction the path to damnation, the path to wickedness, the path of Satan have always been more congested, more crowded than them that want to follow God. That's right. Are you listening? That's right. Let's go back to where we were now. Come on, son. Back in Joshua 23 and verse 25. Listen. Satan came in and appeared to Abraham. The devil the, came and appeared to Abraham. In the figure of a very aged man. He appeared as an old man. Humble. Humble. And of a contrite spirit. As a contrite spirit. And he approached Abraham and said Notice to him. Notice he appeared to Abraham in the reflection of what God calls for. That's right. Humble. And of a contrite spirit. That way he can blend in. That's right. And Abraham don't reject them. Now, this is where being spiritually inclined is so important. Yeah. What do you mean being spiritually inclined? One scripture says in the New Testament, Paul said, know them that labor with you in the gospel. Know them. That means look past the facade Look past the tongue speaking. Look past the shouting. And the only way you can know him, her, or them, the true identity of a human being lies in their heart. Are you listening to what I'm telling you? The, the heart don't lie. Whether they love or hate, whether they mean you good or harm, whether they are deliberate in their actions or not, 
whether they want to murder you, pull you up, pull you down, regardless of the intent, the true characteristics, the truth of that man and the truth of that woman is in the heart. So therefore, for you to truly know him or her, you will have to know their heart. That's right. Because God says he knows the intent of the heart. So when you say, oh, I know him, I know her, if you don't know the heart, you're still dealing with a stranger. That's right. That's right. It takes God to make the heart known. I, the Lord, search the heart. Do you hear this? In the book of Jeremiah 17 and verse 10. I, the Lord, search the heart. Search the heart. I try the rain. I try the, wait, 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 wait. Amen. I try the rain. I you try. know, when someone riding the horse and pull those reins, they can make that horse go left, right, or stop. That's right. Are you getting me? That's right. So he tries the rain. God yeah. pulls the heart. Mm -hmm. A lot of times, God pull us to stop. That's right. How do God pull us to stop? Through preaching. Yeah. It is written, God make manifest his word through preaching. through preaching. It was the preaching of the word that stopped many today from stepping back in that false church they was going to. That's right. God pulled the reins. Stop them. Eh? That's right. God pulled the reins sometime on that sister. She was about to marry someone that was going to take her life. So God stopped the reins. That's right. God stopped the reins on that brother. He was about to marry someone that's going to poison him. Yeah. God stopped the reins. You know, sometimes God will take the reins of the heart and pull it. That's right. Through scripture. That's right. Making something happen to hinder you from getting somewhere. That's right. You have to be there a particular time and can't get there. Seems like you just, just things don't go right. And it was good that it happened. Amen. God interrupt. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Ah. God step in and interrupt you. And a lot of times it was the interruption of God that caused you to still be alive today. Are you listening? I, the Lord, search the heart. Hallelujah. Glory to God. A lot of time, you're supposed to have met up with them group of fellas. Mm -hmm. You're supposed to have went out with those group of girls. They went out, some didn't make it back. But your parents wouldn't let you go or Something happened. Maybe you slipped and fell and injured your leg. Something interfered with what you was about to do. And when you look back, you have to say, I thank God for the interference. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Sometimes interference makes you Make better decisions later. Make you see things clearer. Make you less careless. Glory to God. Yeah. What? I the Lord. Right. Praise the name of God. Yeah. Here you had the devil appearing under Abraham as an old man. Satan came and appeared to Abraham in the figure of a Satan very aged man. Satan came and appeared to Abraham in the figure of an old man. Humble and of a contrite Humble spirit. Humble and of a contrite spirit. And he approached Abraham and said to him. And said what? Art thou silly or brutish? Wait a minute. Come humble. Humble. So if he came humble, look at what he says to Abraham in a humble way. Art thou silly or Are brutish? Are you silly? Are you brutish? That thou goest to do this thing this day to thine only son. That's where the devil do you viewers and you gotta hear. That's right. Devil say you want to walk with God. Somebody come to you projecting right. the image of positivity. That's right. You still going to church. <laughs> you still about that church. You still trying to serve the Lord? Or you, you missing all this fun out here? Sometimes they can say it in such a humble and such a passive way because the devil knows that if he send everybody to you in a militant way, you'll back up. That's right. And it'd be instantly a turn off. That's right. 
But if they talk kind, nice, but yet the objective is not kind, it's not nice, but they appear that way just to keep you from serving God, you're still going to church? Why don't you, why don't you just quit all that praying? Come on, man, be for real. You've been talking about this Holy Ghost stuff. Hey, hey, come on, that's, that's stuff. We ain't down with that. That's the 21st century. And you still talk about some speaking in tongues and they're saying in a joking manner. So you won't be offended. Subtle and seed dropping. Go ahead. For the dropping of seed is the dropping of information. Does it take root? That depends on you. How wet is the soil of your ground? Go ahead. Are you listening? How wet is the soil of your ground? What do you mean? When soil is wet, it has movement. When your mind is wet, you are mentally unstable. So this is what I mean, that whenever Satan plants seed, you determine the success of the seed taking root and something sprouting out, depending upon your own stability. That's right. Well, the scripture says, the very thought of foolishness is sin. It can't nothing spring up in me and overtake me unless I give time to ponder it. Think of it. Consider the possibilities of it. But if I tune it out, that's a seed that will not take root. This is why the Apostle John taught us he that has an ear, let him hear, hallelujah, what the Spirit says to the church. You got to have a spiritual ear. I need When you have a spiritual ear, glory to God, and, and you don't rid yourself from listening in a carnal way. Uh -huh. What do you mean listening in a carnal way? When you listen in the carnal way, you lean to your own understanding, you lean to your own opinion, opinion, and you're so caught up in how you feel. Bible says, take heed how you hear. Yeah. Now, if I listen a godly way, everything I hear, I'm going to judge it by the scriptures. I'm going to look at it from the scriptures. I'm going to approach it with the scriptures. That's right. That way, when I hear it, I want to hear it like God hear it. When I think it, I want to think it like God think it. When I speak it, I want to speak it like God speak it. But I can never do none of this and don't include the word. God's word have to control how I hear. When he control how I hear, then I'm careful how I approach because my hearing gonna be according to the word and my approach gonna be according to the word and my deeds gonna be according to the word that way all my actions will be according to the word so I can be ready for harvest time for the ear tryeth word eh? 